Hi everyone, George here and welcome to the GFS Gallery. Really great to be here and bring you another video. This video is going to be all about how we maintain this Awaze Highline 175 home to my Malawi cichlids. There is a complete dedicated playlist for this aquarium, so check that out. I'll leave a link up there. I haven't cleaned the glass, I haven't cleaned the rocks for ages, I have been doing the water changes to maintain water quality. But I wanted to show you a before and after. So as you can see, probably right now, it is looking a little bit unsightly. There's plenty of algae on the glass, too much algae on the rocks. I do like to leave a little bit of algae on the rocks. The fish like to use that as a natural food source. By the end of the video, it's gonna look super clean, super tidy. You'll get some nice cinematic B-roll for you and some nice music for you as well to enjoy. And do stay with me to the end because I'm gonna try planting it. And uh, let me know what you think in the comments. It'd be great to hear your feedback. And also one last point, I have upgraded filtration and I'll talk about that later. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And like I said, leave me a comment. What do you think about the plants? Okay, first step is to lift the lid. Uh, the Oise Highline range has a really cool lid function. You just press down and push up. It's on a hinge. And now we're gonna clean the glass. So I use my trusty Denale Cleanator. Big fan of this. Some of you may have seen these already. I use them in quite a lot of my videos but it has a, almost like a metal wool, which doesn't actually scratch the glass, but gets rid of any algae, etc., really easily. Okay, what I like to do now is use my toothbrush, not actually obviously used to clean my teeth, but a dedicated aquarium brush, and just clean around the nooks and crannies where you can't reach with the Denale Cleanator, being careful not to get any grains of the gravel in between the brush and the glass otherwise you will scratch the glass and with maintenance it's all about attention to detail so you know if you do see a spot and you think oh i can't be bothered to get there just just do make that effort because you know with aquascaping and maintaining any aquarium it's all about the details when you add all these small details together they do make a big difference so do pay attention to the details and a top tip as well is to look down the side in line with the glass and you can quite easily see if you've missed any algae. So you can already see that just by me disturbing the gravel a little bit, it has kicked a lot of the fish poo, the fish waste into the main water column. That's fine, that's gonna be removed as part of a water change and also the filter is still running, so that's gonna help remove that as well. And then one of the last things we do is clean the filter and I'll show you exactly how we do that later. Sometimes you'll find the hardscape is quite close to the glass and it's really hard to get that toothbrush in between. So I've got a credit card type thing here and we can just slide that in between and that is gonna get rid of the algae as well. Uh, fun fact, this is actually a key card for a hotel that I stay in regularly in Denmark. So now it's a case of cleaning the rocks you could use a metal brush, but that's actually going to physically damage the stone. It's actually going to wear the stone away. So I tend to use the same kind of old toothbrush here. And actually the type of algae this is, it does come off relatively easy. Now this process can take quite a while, so we will go into a time lapse for you. But just to say, it's more of a, an aesthetic thing. The algae itself isn't you know, harmful to the aquarium. And like I said, the fish can actually graze it as well, but I do give them a, a very good diet anyway. So it is more for our own personal preference, what we like to see. Personally, I don't like to see excess, dirty, kind of really dark brown algae. I think it looks unsightly and it kind of um, detracts from the beautiful character of this mini landscape rock or Sirius stone. So you can deliberately leave some, you know, bits of algae in there, especially in these kind of, in these cracks, these crevices. And this adds a, like a sense of contrast to the stone and that could actually enhance the overall appearance, I would say. So as you can see, the water is really cloudy now. We've obviously removed the algae from the stones that's now floating around the water. Eventually the filter could clean it up for us, but before I do that, I'm gonna do a huge water change and then finally clean the filter. 
and any of that waste debris that's been collected by the filter will be removed. Let's do a water change. I'll show you exactly how we do that. So what I've got here is a filter inlet. This is actually from a, an Arase Biomaster. A long hose, a filter hose. This is a 16, 22 millimeter fitting. Obviously fits onto the end of the inlet. And this goes into my garden. Now on a, during the summer months or a sunny day, I like to water the plants with this. It's been absolutely raining like crazy here in the UK recently, lots of uh, floods, so no need to worry about watering the plants. But just go to the other end of the hose right now, give it a good old suck, and then it will siphon down to the level here. And then what I like to do as part of the siphoning process is deliberately disturb the substrate. That's gonna lift up any excess accumulated waste organics into the inlet, and that's gonna be siphoned out as part of the water change. So the whole idea is uh, behind the water change is to dilute these waste organics, which will build up uh, nitrate levels, for example, which you know aren't great for the fish. You know the lower the organic nitrates, the better. There's no plants in here right now to use the nitrogen as a food source. So gradually over the weeks, the nitrate levels are gradually going to creep up. And this is why I like to do a really really big water change. It is quite a heavily stocked aquarium. We've got. 10 Chindongo Suizi cichlids in here. You know, they're about this big right now. Uh, arguably, some people might say it's overstocked with the water changes I'm doing and the large filter that I've got in there, the water quality is maintained. I'll go to the other end of the hose now. I'll give it a good old suck and then we'll watch the water level go down. And then, like I said, I'm gonna disturb the substrate and around the rocks, that's gonna lift up any excess fish poop, etc. Okay, so the filter's been running that whole time while the tank is draining. Now it's time to switch the filter off before the water level dips below the filter inlet, which is behind this main rock on the left. So I'll turn the filter off right now and turn the heater off as well, obviously, otherwise that heater, which is actually inside the Biomaster Thermo, that needs to be switched off, otherwise it's gonna overheat. So make sure you do turn off your heater, ideally before the filter. Okay, as you can see, we've emptied probably about 80% of the water. Now, some of you may consider that too much of a water change. I think the bigger the water change, the better. As long as the water parameters of the water going in and the existing water aren't too different, then the fish aren't gonna suffer at all. In fact, the more fresh water, the better. So let's show you exactly how I add the fresh water using my special red colander the same hose and inlet that we use to take the water out, apart from that I've taken off that extension with the inlet strainer. I've removed that. I've just got the U-bend thing here. That dangles over the side of the aquarium, over the colander. And the idea of the colander is it spreads that water so it doesn't create too much disturbance in the substrate. Next, we're gonna pump fresh water directly from my kitchen into the aquarium. I'm going to show you how I do that right now. So here we have my water filling device. This is just a 10 litre bucket which is about three or four gallons and I have a submersible pump there at the bottom as you can see. My tap is constantly running at the same rate that it's being pumped out at exactly the right temperature which is about 25 or 77 degrees Fahrenheit, 25 degrees Celsius. This is pumping through the hose which say hello to Tommy, and then all the way into the aquarium via the red colander. And that's it. We can add the dechlorinator as we're filling, which I've already done, and we can just watch our aquarium fill up without any need for going to and from the aquarium with buckets. So I really like this way of filling up my aquarium with fresh water. So we've done a huge water change, now it's time to maintain the filter. This is the Awaze Biomaster 600. I was originally running the 350, which is a smaller version of this, but because the fish were getting bigger and they're creating so much waste, I decided to upgrade to the 600, which is massively over-filtered, I would say, for this size aquarium. But like I say, for the fish load, there's no plants doing any nutrient export, so we're purely relying on mechanical and biological filtration as well as water changes to maintain the water quality. Now, most of the regular viewers to the channel might know why I love this filter so much, but it's worth reiterating. It has the built-in pre-filter here, which is so easy to clean. I'm gonna do that in a minute. And it also has the thermo version, which is the built-in heater here. So this is great. This is a removable heater. 
unlike a competitor's model where they actually kind of have a kettle element at the bottom of the filter. If that goes wrong, then you potentially have to you know, pay a lot more money than just replacing the heater if this does fail. So great filter, great output, really easy to maintain, German quality, and this is why I love these filters so much and use them almost exclusively on my own aquariums and my clients' aquariums as well. So first of all, we unplug the heater and then the filter itself. And just for reference, this is the plug-in timer here, which I have on for six hours and from I think 4 p.m. till 10 p.m. Because there's no plants on here, we can have it on as long as, as long as we like or as little as we like. But because there's no plants to help deal with algae growth, I tend to have it on for a shorter amount of time. You can override it here. This is a mechanical plug-in timer, cheap enough to buy from a grocery store, supermarket. And yeah, just a, an easy way to automate your lighting. So definitely recommended for pretty much any aquarium. Now we need to unlock the pre-filter. So to do that, we unlock the right-hand side first, just by rotating this. And then we unlock the pre-filter here. So make sure you've got a bucket or something similar handy to put your pre-filter in. Just lift this out nice and easy. So now we have our pre-filter in our kitchen sink. Let's take it out of the bucket. And now we can quite simply remove the sponges. There's two unlocking tabs either side here. Just push those in. You can see all that waste coming out. Now we can run our tap water. We can run it hot or cold, doesn't really matter. I like to run it just kind of warm. And we can remove our sponges just by sliding them off here, like so. Pop that back in the bucket for now. And now we just literally squeeze each sponge one at a time. I like to squeeze each one 20 times as a, a wrist strengthening exercise and just repeat that for the other sponges so the whole process should only take a few minutes whereas if you compare this to a regular canister filter where you have to dismantle the whole unit it can take a lot longer so now it's a case of rebuilding the filter so simply get our six sponges place them over the tube you can actually clean the inside of this tube as well when it gets too dirty to improve flow and circulation. You might have noticed that the sponges are black. These are actually carbon sponges, which are gonna improve water clarity. And when the carbon is actually exhausted, they'll just act as a regular pre-filter. So at was I actually do three other sponges, a fine, medium, and coarse grain as well, depending on the type of uh, how fine you want that mechanical filtration to be. So there we go, now we're ready to fit this back into the main filter unit. So now we place the pre-filter, make sure this key goes into the keyway here, 12 o'clock position. There we go, and then lock it, and then lock the other side. Now we're ready to switch the filter and the heater back on. It's important to plug in the filter before the heater so the unit doesn't potentially overheat. And there'll be a little bit of air in the filter because we've just cleaned the pre-filter, but that will clear soon. And that is the aquarium maintained.
Okay guys, so the tank's maintained. As you can see, it's looking a lot better than it did when we started the maintenance. Cleaned the rocks, did a big water change, cleaned the filter. And that's one of the great things about a hardscape only tank. Obviously, it's got no plants in there right now. We don't have to focus on liquid fertilizers. Lighting isn't so important. There's no CO2 injection. But you've still got a high impact aquascape where you can enjoy the movement and the color of the fish, the behavior of the fish. You can still enjoy a nice kind of visual impact with a hardscape. The more observant of you that have watched the videos of this tank from the start might have noticed over the months I've rearranged the rock slightly. I think it looks a lot better. And this is another important lesson. You can kind of gradually evolve an aquascape uh, until, you know, until you're really happy with it. So every now and again, I'll just move a couple of rocks around and see how it looks. And it's all about this kind of gradual evolution to hopefully reach the goal of having something that you're really happy to live with. I have to confess, when I did set it up originally, I thought I'd only probably have it running a few months because, you know, I'm a massive fan of planted aquariums. I do love my aquarium plants. And I thought without them, without that kind of growth and maintenance of the plants, etc., I'd get really bored. But I really love this. I love this tank to live with. It's really easy to look after. The fish are great. And if you've got more than one aquarium, then, you know, you could have a planted and then you could have a cichlid or, you know, mix up those kind of genres of aquariums. And then you can kind of have more experience and get more pleasure from the hobby. So, like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm going to put some plants in there. I've got some old Anubias left over from the 1200 behind me there, which I removed as part of the rescape. I will do a full update on that scape soon. So I'm going to pop some Anubias in between the stones, uh, see how they go, see if the, the fish tear them apart or see if they just float away or they won't thrive in there long term because there is no, I'm not going to be adding liquid fertiliser, I'm not going to add any CO2 injection. The lighting isn't specifically for plants. But Anubius is really hardy, you know, it might grow in there, it might do really well, or it might get covered in algae and destroyed by the fish. But, you know, these are spare plants, so it's kind of a risk-free strategy. And I'm genuinely interested to see what you think. Do you think it looks better without the plants or better with? And do you have any experience of a planted cichlid tank yourself, in particular Malawi cichlids? It's simply a case of grabbing the Anubius. This is Anubius Petite from Tropica, which I've removed from my Aquascaper 1200 quite recently. And I'm just going to wedge it in between the appropriate kind of cracks. So hopefully the fish won't rip it up too much. And with the right conditions, the roots and the rhizome will actually stick themselves to the stone. The interesting thing about Anubius is it does actually originate from Africa, which is where these fish do come from. But uh, these are from Lake Malawi, where I do believe there is no Anubius, so it's not exactly by tote specific, but at least we're representing a kind of continent theme. Okay guys, there we go. Uh, the Awaze Highline 175 African Cichlid Tank has been maintained. We've added some plants. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. And thanks so much for watching to the end. I really appreciate it. If you have enjoyed the video, hit that thumbs up. It means a lot. And subscribe if you haven't already. Just a quick announcement. Tomorrow at the time of filming, so tomorrow is the 14th of November 2019, I will be in World of Water Bista, which is in England, uh, near Oxford. It's a big aquarium store, and I'm going to be scaping some Awaze aquariums there. So come along to that if you can. I'll overlay some details for that for you. I know it's short notice, and many of you will be watching this post-event, but just in case you can come along, that'd be awesome. Some other news, I'm getting married in 10 days' time from the time of filming, so this will mean my upload schedule will be limited. Let's talk about the book. Um, I'm well on the way of writing it. It is due, the manuscript is due to be handed in mid-January, which will hopefully mean a publishing date of next summer. And then I'll have some exciting plans about how we're going to launch the book, potentially do some international store visits, etc. So keep your eyes and ears out for that. 
I'll just end by saying thanks so much for watching my content. I do really appreciate it. Aquascaping is my absolute passion. Hopefully that comes across in the content. Hopefully you can be inspired and educated as well along with these videos. You take care, keep on scaping. Cheerio. So if I kind of approach the tank slowly, hopefully they don't spook and hide away, which they probably have right now. Really annoying. When I go anywhere near the tank with food, they go crazy. Uh, let's, in fact, let's try that right now. Let's pretend we're going to feed them. In fact, let's feed them. There's the food. It's here. Okay, come on, guys. Here we go. Get some food. There we go. Okay, approach it slowly and hopefully they won't all go skittish and hide in the rocks so you can have a nice view of the cichlids. There we go.